Vision is arguably our most important sense. With 90% of all information coming into the brain being visually related and 50% of the brain being used up to process vision. So you wanna save eyeballs, but how do you go about doing it? Today, I'm going to talk about eight different careers, four of them involving formal education and the other four, not so much. And stick around until the end where I'll tell you which one I chose and why. Starting it off with the granddaddy of them all, we have ophthalmology. And what do they do? So ophthalmologists are known as the formal eye doctors that people think of. They're the ones who do the surgeries and some primary care of the eyes. They're the only ones authorized to do all of the surgeries around the eyeball. And this requires a lot of formal education. They do four years of undergraduate program, four years of medical school, and another four to five years of residency. Now that's a lot of education, but keep in mind, the eyeballs are so sensitive and specialized that you really need good training. Now don't worry, the surgeries comes in all different shapes and sizes. There's surgeries that you can do in the retina in the back of the eye, in the front of the eye, in between, and even the areas around the eye. So if you want to do eye surgeries, you need to be an ophthalmologist. But remember that going to medical school, you aren't necessarily guaranteed to become an ophthalmologist. Now, after medical school, either getting your MD or your DO, you might spend four years of medical school and not match in to an ophthalmology residency because it's so competitive. So if you want to for sure be an ophthalmologist, you need to try really, really hard and network really well to for sure get an ophthalmology residency. But is it worth it? All of the ophthalmologists I know love their job, they're doing great, and they start at about $200,000 a year, which with all of the jobs I'll talk about, I'll kind of give starting or average salary numbers, but know that if you own your own business or if you're in a business that you contribute a lot to the growth to, you can make a lot more. I know ophthalmologists that make a ton more than $200,000 a year. The next profession I'm going to talk about is optometry. Now, optometrists are also eye doctors, but they're more in the primary care of the eye. What they do is more of the subcritical or subsurgical section of the care of the eye. A lot of it has to do with primary care. So just if you go into your eye doctor, you need glasses, you need contacts. That's what optometrists will do. But they also have other unique parts of their career, such as the functional side of optometry. That being people going blind or have, you know, visual handicaps, that's with low vision. You have vision rehabilitation, so people who have strokes or other brain injuries who need to better use their vision. And you also have vision therapy, which you can use for vision rehabilitation, but also helps with people with vision-related learning disabilities. For example, some people have trouble pointing their eyes in which can make it hard to read and can give you a lot of hard symptoms with near tasks. So optometry is a lot more than glasses and contacts, but it is also sub-surgical to an extent. A lot of states can vote on what they want their optometrists to be able to do. And a lot of states that have not as many ophthalmologists have extended the scope of optometrists to be able to do a lot of minor surgical procedures. So just know that if you want to be an optometrist, you're not gonna be stuck doing glasses and contacts all day. You can do a lot of other really cool things, including some minor surgeries. But what is the training of an optometrist? It's not going to be as much as the ophthalmologist, but it is still four years of undergraduate and four years of optometry school. And optometry school is comparable to medical school, but it's generally thought to be a little less intense and you graduate with your OD degree or doctor of optometry. And you can also go on to specialize after optometry school in a residency, which will be a one year optional residency. So if you want to go into ocular disease or low vision or just specialize in things like that, you can do further education after optometry school to set yourself apart. And is it worth it to be an optometrist? Well, the starting salary is about 110 to 150 grand, depending on the state you work at. Similar to ophthalmology, the work-life balance for an optometrist is really, really good compared to a lot of medical careers. 
You know, you're not going to be on call or doing a lot of the life threatening stuff, but you're still going to be saving vision, which is what this video is all about. Now, the next career might surprise you, and that is occupational therapy. Now, occupational therapy is usually a master's program, but you can go on to get a doctorate level degree like an ophthalmologist or an optometrist. You can become a doctor of occupational therapy. So what do occupational therapists do? Well, they do a lot of things. They're trained to help you rehabilitate into your occupation or whatever it is you need to do. A lot of people think of, you know, working with old people with fall risks or people with a history of some disease which limits their mobility. But occupational therapists can also work with people's vision. They can do this with things similar to what optometry can do with low vision and vision therapy. Now, they usually don't work on their own because they're not specialized in the eye, but they can work alongside optometrists and ophthalmologists to better the care and better the vision therapy or low vision rehabilitation of the patients. And a lot of occupational therapists can help a lot in those brain injury patients. And the need for occupational therapists that work with vision is a ton right now. So you're going into a career that will be definitely good for you. And occupational therapists will do the four years of undergrad and then two to three years of school, depending on the program. Now, occupational therapists usually don't make as much as the doctorate level careers, but it's still really good, starting at about seventy-five to $100,000 per year. Now, the next one is probably thought of a lot less than even occupational therapy, and that is being a physician's assistant or a PA. Now, a PA is a master's degree. Now, that's four years of undergrad and two to three years of PA school, depending on the program. Now, PAs assist physicians, and so you'd work with an ophthalmologist doing the things that they need you to do. Now, these are less common because of the involvement of optometry in the pre- and post-operative care of ophthalmologists. And so although you can do a lot of primary care eye work as a PA in ophthalmology, most of the time you'll see these PAs being replaced by optometrists. But that doesn't mean they don't exist, and that doesn't mean that you can't be a PA that helps save eyeballs. But is it worth it to be a PA? Now, PAs make more money than occupational therapists on average. They make about $100,000 to $125,000 a year, depending on where you work. Now, the next four don't require formal education, but there are a lot of on-the-job trainings and certificates that you can get to become distinguished in these fields. And the first one I want to talk about is being a vision therapist. Now, Optometry offices that specialize in vision therapy or vision rehabilitation will need vision therapists. And these can be people coming from all different backgrounds. I know a lot of people who were teachers that then get trained to be a vision therapist. I even know someone who was the CFO of a company ended up going through vision therapy himself and quitting to become a vision therapist. So this can be a really rewarding career. And basically what they do is they carry out the vision therapy sessions that someone would need to be able to improve their vision through vision therapy or orthoptics, as sometimes it's called. Now, the education needed, most people like you to have graduated with an undergraduate degree, but that's not required. It's mostly just on-the-job training to be able to do it the way that the optometrist supervising you wants it to be done. And you can go on to become certificate trained to become a certified optometric vision therapist or COVT, which usually bumps your pay raise up a bit and helps you better treat your patients. But is it worth it? Now, being a vision therapist really depends on the office you work at. It can be as low as $15 an hour or whatever the hourly wage they choose to pay you, but a lot of them can make a big difference in their office and get paid up to eighty dollars or $90,000 a year. Now, the next occupation I want to talk about is really not known either, and that is called a paraoptometric. Now, being a paraoptometric is a little ambiguous, but it just means someone who works alongside an optometrist. What a paraoptometric does is really dependent on the office you work at. A lot of them can serve as technician type people. They can do the scans or the reports or even the scribing for the doctors. They can even be involved in triage or other care of the patients. And you can even be certified to be in the coding or billing department as well. And so being in paraoptometric can really pay off, but it usually starts out as like vision therapy, entry level hourly wages, 
but you can really make a difference in the offices you go to, and there's a lot of certifications you can get. You can take exams to get your certificate in being a basic, intermediate, or advanced para-optometric, and those usually come with big pay raises and big differences made in the offices you work at. So you can assist optometrists in saving people's eyes. But the average salary for a para-optometric is about $40,000 a year, and is very comparable to something like a teacher, de depending on the state you live in. Next one I wanna talk about is called a medical assistant. And it's basically what a para-optometric is to an optometrist is a medical assistant or a thalmic technician to an ophthalmologist. Like an optometrist that works with an ophthalmologist or a PA that works with an ophthalmologist, you will do some of the entry-level testing or care for these patients that need to be seen by an ophthalmologist. As a med tech or ophthalmic technician, you can make a big difference in the people's vision that you see. You can be trained in anything that the office needs you to be able to do, just as long as the doctors are signing off on your work. And so I know a lot of people who are in this career who have a really great and fulfilling life, and they do a lot of great work to care for their patient's eyeballs. Now, these are usually underpaid, depending on the offices you work at, but the starting salary is usually thirty to $50,000 a year. Now, the last one is usually not someone that you'd think of when you think of saving eyeballs, but it's important enough that I wanna mention it in this video, and that is an optician. Now, an optician really deals with the glasses or contacts that someone's needing to buy at an ophthalmology or an optometry practice. When a doctor like an optometrist or an ophthalmologist gives you a prescription to fill for your glasses or your contacts, it's best to take it to an optician because they are trained to get it right for you. Now you usually think of opticians, you know, I don't know, at the mall selling you the high style lenses and they do a lot of that too, help you pick out the right frames for your face and make you look good, but they also make a big difference in the patient's vision. A lot of patients are unhappy with their glasses and they don't know why, but that can be resolved by taking it to an optician where they can take proper measurements get them fitted correctly, get them fitted around your face correctly, and really help you ease in to loving your glasses and contact lenses, which honestly, if an optometrist gives you a prescription, but you never wear it, that optometrist really didn't make a difference in your life. So opticians are really the boots on the ground for having you love your new vision. Now, education for an optician is honestly the same as the last three, is it's really groundwork level. You don't need a ton to enter in. But opticians also have ABO certification and even some certification with the American Optometric Association where you can take exams to prove that you know your stuff and that you can help patients as an optician. Now, you can be ABO certified or NCLE certified for contact lenses. And opticians can be certified as basic, advanced, or master opticians in their certifications. And opticians can make a lot of money depending on the practice you're at, but they usually start at about $50,000 a year. Or if you're working at a slower practice, maybe some low hourly wages until you're able to make a big difference and help your patients and get up to that average of about $50,000 a year. So having said that, with all of these great professions, the one that I decided to do was optometry. Now, I really did not want to be in the medical profession at all because I didn't like blood, guts, and needles. And so anything in the medical school or even PA school was out of the question for me because I really felt queasy. But when I was 20, I got eyeglasses for the first time and no blood, no guts, no needles. I felt safe. I felt like I had a relationship with the doctor I went to. And honestly, it got me to look into optometry for the first time and really love it. They made such a profound impact in my life in being able to see well for the first time ever. I really fell in love and wanted to make a big difference. And a lot of people try to deter me saying that, you know, optometrists aren't real doctors. Why not just go to medical school? But honestly, what I wanted to do was participate in the primary care of the eyeball. I wanted to save people's eyes. And I've gotten really interested in vision therapy, pediatrics, and helping brain injury patients recover and rehabilitate, which is all under the scope of optometry. I'm a third year student currently, 
but I love the clinical experience that I've been able to get. And I love the real saving of eyeballs that I get to do every single day. So if you want to learn more about optometry, that's what my page is about. But I really encourage you to go out and save some eyeballs and look into each of these different careers and which one would be a best fit for you. And hopefully we'll see you in the next video.